Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Thanks for checking the video out. Today I want to take a look at the reasons why I love Logic Pro X, why I couldn't live without it day to day in the studio. There are lots of other doors available, but to me, Logic Pro X just makes sense. So much of it just does exactly what it says on the tin. There's far less menu diving, far less searching for shortcuts, searching for different functions. It's all just there for you, and I find it so intuitive. Let's take a look at why. So the first thing I want to take a look at really is the inspector panel on the left. The inspector panel can do just so much. And if you look at other doors, I know Cubase has an inspector panel that's pretty similar to this, but the sheer amount that you can do and the sheer amount that is just visible to you straight away is really something special in Logic. So if we take a look over on the left hand side here, we've got the inspector panel. We can bring it up by just pressing I, you can hide it by pressing I as well. Here you've got everything you need to know about the track that you've got selected. So first and foremost, you've got all your plugins. Down on the left hand side, you've got everything there. You've got all your sends if you've got any, you've got your inputs, everything is there. You've got your fader. Okay, that's fine. But also up on the top section of it, you've got all your flex and quantize information, which you don't necessarily have on other doors. Let's say, for example, we've got flex on this track and we want to quantize some audio. Okay, so let's bring up flex and we want to say, okay, let's bring on our groups and these ones we want to quantize this piece of audio. Well, it's so simple because we just select the audio we want to quantize, go over to quantize in the inspector panel and go to eighth note. And it just does it straight away for you. There's no messing around moving stuff. It's just automatically going to quantize it for you. It's straight away there. And this is really great for just locking audio in. It's just one of the features that the inspector has that makes it really useful. There's a few others that I want to dig into though. So your groups over here on the left, you can see which groups your certain audio track you've got selected is assigned to. In many other doors, so I'm looking at Pro Tools here, the grouping system is absolutely loved by some and kind of hated by others. As we're going to see a little bit later in the video, there's some things that Logic does here that are far superior to Pro Tools in that sense, in my opinion, um, and some ways that I think Pro Tools users are going to love over Logic Pro. But to me, just having the groups in the inspector here is far superior to anything. And you can select exactly what you want from the groups. So if you go to settings, we know that this is in the drums. I know if I want my edits to be relative to the groups, I can just click that box. I can quantize lock audio. I can do so much within these groups, just all on that left panel. No extra windows brought up, no nothing like that. It's all just on the left in the inspector panel for me. And one small feature that's kind of never really spoken about, it's just taken as granted, is if you select a certain track, so guitar for example, it's going to bring up the bus that it's going to. If you bring up the kick, I know that it's going to the drums, so it's going to bring up that drum bus here as well. I don't then have to go into the channel to then bring up some sort of bus, it just knows where it's rooted to, so it's going to bring it up for me. I find that so useful and that's why the inspector is my number one feature I, I just couldn't live without in Logic. The second one is the shortcuts. Now, so many doors have fully featured kind of shortcut systems within them and you can manipulate all of them. In Logic Pro, you can change all the key commands to whatever you want. That's not unique to Logic. You can do that anywhere. But just by default, how much sense the shortcuts actually make just seem to make the most sense. So for example, if you're zoomed in on a certain piece of audio, as I am here, well, if I want to then zoom out to everything, I don't have to manually kind of zoom out using, you know, it's just a bit of a nightmare. I can select everything and just press Z. And that's going to zoom to everything you've got selected. If I just want to select a couple of regions and press Z, it's just going to zoom to those regions. Now, there are a few different ways that different doors do this. I know if you want to zoom to the full session in Cubase, it's something mad like Option, Shift, and S, which makes no sense. If you want to do it in Pro Tools, you have to press Control, Option, Command, and Up. It just makes no sense. Just having Z as the one zoom to fit everything is really intuitive. Here's a few more key commands that you're probably going to find useful if you use Logic Pro X every day. Z is going to zoom to whatever regions you have selected. Pressing T is going to bring up your tools menu. Pressing E is going to bring up your editor. I is going to bring up the inspector. O is going to bring up your loops. That's easy to remember because an O is essentially a never ending loop. P is your piano roll. C is the cycle. And X is going to bring up your mixer. X being the dominant letter in the word mixer. So 
So we all know how fully featured the plugins that you get within Logic as stock are. You've got so many plugins here that you don't need anything external at all. You can just do it all with what you've got. But the one that I really want to zone in on is the compressor. And it's not necessarily the sound of it, the, the different sounds that you can get. It's how easily you can switch between those sounds. So on my drums, I've got the kick selected. And as we saw before, we've got the drum bus here just on the right. I'm going to bring up that compressor. And we can just flick between the different compressor emulations so easily. It would have been simple for Logic when they when this was created to have these all in separate plugins. But then when you've got five, six, however many emulations there are, all in different plugins, it makes it really convoluted. It makes it so much more so much more laborious to go through the different emulations. Here you can just at the click of a button hear how the different emulations are going to sound and how they're going to affect the audio. Let's take a listen to that now. So let's just play some audio. Let's get some compression going. Cool. Now let's switch between the different emulations. Smashy. Much more open. Just being able to switch between those emulations at the flick of a button makes the workflow so much more streamlined. You don't have to go opening up a load of different plugins just to audition different types of compressor topology. You can do it all within that one Logic Pro compressor stock plugin. And it really opens up a whole new world uh, in your Sonic palette. You can create so many different compression types without having to open different plugin windows. And to me, that is invaluable. So the sampler that we get within Logic was kind of an updated version of the one we had before and everything has gone into this one sampler. So it's easy to kind of think that it's been simplified in some way, but it's the complete opposite. All the different sampling possibilities you had in previous versions of Logic have just been made better and been more streamlined. So I'm going to show you an example of why that's the way and how exactly I use this sampler and how you can use it so quickly. So let's say, for example, I like one of these snare sounds and I want to use it as an effect in a certain section, whatever it is, you can just cut out a piece of audio and create a new sampler instrument with it. So let's select this and let's not be too crazy over exactly how specific we want to get on the start. We don't need to snap to a zero crossing or anything. I'm just going to grab that piece of audio down to the bottom and go quick sampler. And it's just loaded up into a sampler for us. Now we can do so many things within this. We can trim the beginning of it. That's why we don't have to be too specific over the start and end points. We can fade out. We can fade in. We can do whatever we need to do there. And as a bonus, we can just bring up the keyboard here just by pressing Command and K. And we can play that sample and hear how it's going to sound detuned, uptuned, or whatever it is. Okay, cool. But then we've also got so many different effects and a way of manipulating this. We've got filters, we've got different ways of panning it, we've got different kinds of pitch, envelope depth. We've got so much just within this one sampler that just being able to drag a sample into that so easily, all built into Logic, is such a unique thing to have in a door. I know that Cubase does this, and I know that a couple of other doors have this sampler functionality within it, but to me, this is such a familiar way of working with things within the Logic Pro whole ecosystem. It just works for me. I couldn't live without it, and it makes things so much easier that you don't have to take things into external plugins. It's all within that Logic Pro X sphere. I love it. Finally, I want to take a look at the mixer. I love the mixer in Logic Pro. I find that it's so intuitive and it just does things in a way that makes sense to me. So for example, if we bring up the mixer by just pressing X, if I want to move the faders of these, these channels, for example, well, in a lot of other doors, you have to use some like weird key combination like shift and control and then drag it up or create a group and you can't really do it. And um, it just makes things a lot more difficult. But in Logic, you just select all the channels and then bring them up. And it's exactly the same with sends. If you just select all these three channels and select this send, well, it's going to bring them up on all three of them. Similarly, if you want to do the pan, just select all three or however many there are and just bring the pan over. That might seem like a simple thing to do, but in a lot of other doors, you can't just do things that simply. It doesn't make sense to have a load of modifier keys to do such a simple thing. 
And also within the mixer, you have so many ways of manipulating your sends. And I've done a video on exactly what buses are and how you can utilize buses to your advantage. You can check it out in the description below. But just the sheer amount of ways that you can bus things and the amount of ways that you can, for example, bring up sends on faders. You can just go up to the top here and we can mirror our sends onto the faders which is handy if you're trying to have independent pan of these sends. You want to send something just into the left of that bus or just into the right of that bus. It's really easy. You can just go to independent pan, sends on faders, and then you can say, right, I just want this one. And then say I'm a drum verb, just go into the right hand side of that bus. In some plugins, that is a big deal, having things going to the left and right hand side of buses. But it's not only that, it's bringing stuff up into the arrange window from the mixer as well. So let's say, for example, I want this drum verb and drum room to come up on the mixer. It's not there at the moment. If I just select them both and press Control and T, it's going to bring them up in the mixer. And then I can drag them to wherever I want them to be. From there, I can do some automation. I can do whatever I want to do. I've got everything in drums in the same place. Being able to take stuff from the mixer and put it onto the arrange window is something that we kind of take for granted. But I just love the way that Logic does it just selecting it, press Control and T, and it brings it up, and then you can manipulate it. You can move it, you can add automation to those buses, you can do whatever it is you need to do, and it just makes everything so much simpler. Within that mixer, we can see the channel EQ, and we can see the gain reduction on a compressor as well. If we just take a look at that drum bus, then we can see exactly how much compression is happening. We can see the gain reduction here. One thing that I'd love to be implemented in future versions of Logic is to be able to have any compressor shown on that. Any compressor that has got gain reduction happening, I'd love to be able to see that on that meter. Any kind of EQ where it's got a graphical interface, I'd love to be able to see that at the top here. I don't want it to just be the Logic stock plugins. It would be really useful. So Logic, it's not without wants. It's not without things that I would love to be included but I just find it so intuitive. I find it to be the door that I just work best in. I've tried so many others and I just keep coming back to Logic. It just works for me. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know in the comments what you love about Logic or if there's some things that you just find so frustrating and we'll see if we can work out how to make it work for you best. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you again soon. Take care.